So this is what happens to you if you let someone who is at least four foot four uh, drive your car with the car seat all the way pulled up on the driver's side. I've been driving like this and I look like a goddamn clown in this car. So I'm gonna try to fix this today. So I believe one of the screws you have to take out is actually this one. It's that one. I believe you take that one out. Make sure you have a very short screwdriver. Uh, it's not intended to be taken out when it, the seat's all the way to the front. So what I used was this guy, really small, maybe like two inches long. And there'll be a point where the screwdriver will still hit this. So if you go to a drill bit, once you already loosened it, you can do this by hand. I just got, I got a little bit, a uh, Phillips head bit, and just use this. It's shorter than the screwdriver. Yeah, I just use these. So after you take out those screws, there'll be two more screws after you take out the little push buttons. So these buttons on the side, you pry these open, be careful. Uh, you might break the clips like I did, but I think it'll still work because there's these additional clips that are still fine. So be careful with that. Um, but yeah, there should be three screws on the side and then you should be able to pry this open. Uh, you might have to be a little bit rough with this. Uh, the, cr the clips are in there pretty good, but here's the culprit. Um, so as you can tell, if we move this one, you still have a clicking noise, like it wants to engage. But if you look here, see that? It just gets stuck. So it looks like the little actuator, the linear uh, rod or whatever you want to call it, is not engaged with the, the rail, I guess. What I'm gonna do is try to screw this thing to the right. And that should uh, cause the, the rod to rotate or move left so it could engage. But uh, yeah, you need a square bit. Uh, I don't know the size of this, but this is what I found and it works. It, look, it looks like it fits perfectly in here. So I'm just gonna rotate that to the right or turn it to the right and see how that goes. Okay, so good news, I did get it to engage. Uh, just to FYI, this is gonna be very difficult to rotate at some point because you're basically trying to put the rod back into the hole, but it's not lined up correctly. So basically by rotating it to the right, you're just trying to force it in by just using the natural force of the uh, of rotating the this uh, square head. So I found out I couldn't use a regular screwdriver, so I had to go get a, a ratchet with an adapter for this. So I have more leverage. Um, it's not a big ratchet, but just enough to get it rotating. But uh, don't be scared to break it. Uh, once I got it engaged, as you can see, I can move this around pretty nicely now. Once I got it engaged, there's a, a kind of a loud bump or uh, noise. And that just means it just got engaged. So now that I could do this, I think, we're back to normal. Jesus Christ. My knees will be thanking me, holy shit. Thank God it was a simple fix. At first I thought this motor was out and I had to go change that bad boy, but it's just this. So we're back, we're back in business, boys. Whatever you do, whatever, if you have a Toyota camera or any car, don't go all the way to the front because that could disengage the whole rod or whatever, or linear actuator. Uh, they should have designed this better, to be honest, but there you go. It works.